Hello guys, welcome back to KDCode. In this video, I am going to explain you a small project that is scrapping cricket data and implementing a linear regression from scratch using that data. For this project, I am getting the information from the popular website that is svncrickinfo.com. Let's go to this website. This is the website I am talking about. Now we can go to the stats and stats guru. Let's take uh, the T20 data here. Click on it and then batting. So we'll be getting data from uh, 2005 to 2024. Let's submit the query. So this is the data of all the players. This is the data of uh, 3,710 players. We'll be getting all the matches they played and the innings, the runs, the average score and the balls they faced, the hundreds and fifties they scored, everything. We'll get all data here of all those players. You can see the first row we have Virat Kohli. Likewise, we'll get all the data 3710 players data this is the first page of this data and we have total 75 pages we will be scrapping all those 75 pages and making an excel sheet out of it let's see how to do it for scrapping the data i am using request package and also beautiful soup to pass the html content let's import them import request and also import from ps4 import beautiful soup And after scrapping to store the information in an Excel sheet, we have to import some library to make the data store in that Excel sheet. So I'm importing CSV. So I'm importing the CSV package to convert the data into CSV format. Let's run it. For now, let's scrap the first page and then we will uh, scrap all the pages one after one. Let's copy this URL first. Create a variable URL, paste it here. Now by using request package, we will be getting all the raw data from this URL. And I am using beautiful soup to pass the raw data into a HTML content. Let's print this on soup variable. So we got all the HTML content here. Using this HTML content, we have to extract the required information from this content. Right. So let's go to this website again. We have to inspect this website in the sense let's right click and click on inspect here you can also click ctrl shift i to see this window if you see here there is a small icon here you click on it and hover on any of the attribute here you will be seeing all the data on the right side elements so if i click on kohili you will be seeing all the data in the right side window in an HTML format like this is a row TR class data one with uh, you can see uh, on the left side it is highlighting the row and this is the column in the first row that is nothing but our name the player's name and the second row is the span and corresponding third row fourth row fifth row and so on like that uh, every other rows of there here so by seeing this we can say that our data lies in this class in this table view we have this data one class right so our data lies in this data one class so we need to take the data one class and use to find that data one class in this html content to find our required data to extract our required data right so if we search for data one here data one class let's see we'll be getting all those data right data one the player's name and the span everything score everything we'll be getting here right the first row will be where kohili right let's see this is the first row we kohili right so the data which we needed is there in this content here itself in this html content let's see how to extract it from this soup we use find all function to extract those data we need to give the tag we need to extract the data from and also the corresponding class in this case it is data one let's store it in a content variable let's print it You see, we got all the information in a list, right? Let's see the length of this list. So it is 50 rows. We got 50 rows of data in that single page, right? Yeah, showing 1 to 50 of those 3,710 players. So we got all the rows here from the table. So then after we have to extract those data, right? 
let's see how to extend them I will be using a for loop here for R in that content sorry for each row in that content let's say row let's see how they will look you can see there are so many rows inside this tag the row tag we need to get every tag we need to extract every tags uh, data here and convert them to the xml format right so let's code it now in this row we need to find all the td tags first right td because we have all the data in this td tags you can see here now this is the player's data player data let's see how this data looks So we got all those data in the list form. The first index is having a name and the corresponding index is having the span, everything like that. So in this way, we'll get all this data. But there are some extra information also, like TD class left, no wrap, like that. But we need only the text data inside it. So what we have to do? There is a way you can get that. Let's see it. So I will be iterating over all the data in this player data. For D in player data, if the D dot text is not empty I'll be taking the data print of data text so see I got all the data here without any tags now I will be storing all of them in a list right let's let's create a list players equal to a list let's say players info will be appending my players input data here depend of d dot text let's remove this print here and here so each player info is appended here correspondingly for each row I will get all the information for that uh, each player I have to append them in a big list right so final players list is the final players list uh, I will be storing uh, all the players information the list of information about the list of players, right? Not append players info. I remove this break. Now let's print the final players list. Let's run it. See, I got 50 rows with all the data here. In a similar fashion, I have to scrap all those 75 pages. This is only the one page information, right, guys? I have to scrap all those 75 pages now. So let me make a function or whole thing into one cell. It will be easy to scrap all of those using one for loop, right? Let me copy all of this. Copying this. But wait, the URL gets changed every time when we change the page, right? Let's see how it is going to change. This is the first page. So URL looks this way. Let's go to second page. Next. If we go to second page, you can see we have a new attribute here, page equal to two. Then if you go then if you go to the next page again it changes to 3 and then next sorry and then next we got 4 so every time we change the page it changes this variable itself so instead of this URL we'll be using this URL and using a for loop for i in range of we have to scrap from 1 page to 75 pages so let's take it as 76 so it will go until 75 and have to change this page number um, every time right every iteration we have to change the page number so let's make it dynamic plus let's I need, I need to change this 4 into a variable i so that's it and then after we have to find all the data one rows Then I have to use this for loop to collect all the information about players, right? Let's remove this unnecessary print statements here. Let me define this list outside the for loop. That's it. Let's run it. Players data. Okay, I need to intent this. Okay, run it. One more error. So what is there? So it is the int. Uh, let me change into string. 
okay it's running it will take some time because there are a lot of pages right 75 let it run so it completed guys so now i got all the information of 75 pages in a single list i have to convert all this list into a excel sheet csv file let's see how we do it so before creating the excel sheet let me create headers first so these are the headers if you see for each uh, row we have different elements right the first one is name and second one is span and the third one is matches i got these headers from the same website like if you hover on these headers you will be getting some meaningful name there uh, based on that you can create your own headers based on it uh, i have created it uh, like matches innings notes runs highest score average score ball space everything like that okay you can get them from here not ops so i have created this let me remove this these are the headers and final so i got all the data in this final players list copy it let me make a csv out of it to make a csv first we need to open a file so with open let's say click info one dot csv because we are using csv package to convert those list into csv format and we use write yes f and let me write those uh, headers first so csv writer equal to csv dot writer of here we created an object here let me write this row csv writer dot write row i'm writing the fields first and then i can write all the rows next like csv writer dot write row but we are not writing only one row right we have a list of rows so let's say write rows of final players list and then at last we can close the file csv writer dot close this is how we create a csv file using the csv package let's run it so we have to give f here so we have to close the file right now the object i think it's created so let's import pandas to see how it looks spd data frame data frame pd dot read csv so we are reading the csv file right so we have to, give, we have to call that function click info dot csv let's see the first five rows df dot head let's see so this is the information we have scrapped from that website let's see the length of these rows you have dot shape to get the length there are 3710 rows it's 15 columns so yeah hooray we got all the rows all the players information here if you want you can see this information in xml sheet also like let me show it for you once so these are all the information we got right you can close it so for the overview until this part i have imported all the required libraries user the website on uh, espn click info user this uh, url and then scrapped all the data not only first page uh, like i have scrapped all the 75 pages here using this for loop and found this uh, class and required data i started all the data and created a list and out of that list i have created a csv file right now let's uh, analyze this data and make a machine learning model out of it let's do it so let's see if there is any empty values or any values in this data frame you see that df dot is any dot sum you can use this i can see there are no null values here so all values are getting from this website there are no null values we are happy to see that let's see info for it if you can see here all these values are objects except this matches so in order to make a machine learning model and in order to give inputs to this model we only need to give the numeric inputs we should not give the string inputs so it will not process the string inputs basically so we should convert all of these into a numeric format of course we cannot convert name and span is nothing but the year right it is unique for every player so let's remove these two rows out of our context let's analyze all these rows so let's see df 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 dot drop let's copy this name and the span i don't want these two rows 
at present for the analysis. So let me remove them. I will give the axis. Axis equal to one. So let's see df dot head. Yeah, those two columns got uh, deleted. So let's do some cleaning here because if you see the highest score here, if you want to convert this highest score to the numeric format, if you see the first row 122 star, so this star is a string, and it cannot convert the string into numeric if it is having uh, any string values in it. So let me clean this. So let me clean this up first. Before that, let's see uh, which variables can be converted into the numeric form and creating a dummy data frame. So we are doing uh, data cleaning here. Data cleaning. For I in and taking all the rows in the uh, DF data frame. So columns. Let's try to convert all of them into data frame, into numeric format. So I'll be storing them in the data frame too. After converting them to the numeric form. If it doesn't happen, except print of i. We want to know which row is not being converted into numeric format, right? Let's see. If you see here, except matches, no other row is being converted into the numeric format because there was an error. If you want to see the error, let me do this. See? Oh, yeah. There may be some blank values. Instead of empty values, there may be some data not available and they have filled with, uh, they had filled with uh, iPhone there. Let's remove it. Let's clean all this data first. Before uh, converting them into the numeric format, you have to remove the iPhone. Let me do that. So starting with innings, we take innings for example, take innings. If we want to count how many values are there with iPhone, let's do this. So if you see this, uh, there are 259 rows with uh, iPhone. You can do it in the other way also, like df dot innings dot unique. So if you see this, there is iPhone here. We need to remove all these iPhones in this data frame. I'll be doing that now. If I do this, like same as the below row. If I in data frame dot columns, I have to take each column and I have to, I'm creating an empty data frame here. The F2 of I. So, what I want to do is, I want to remove all the iPhones. So, I have to take each column. And say if it is not equal to iPhone, I have to take the data frame. So df and like this. So it will be stored in this new data frame without iPhone values. Let's let's do it. So I missed this. So what I'm doing is instead of a row, one single. So instead of one single column, I have um, used all of the data frame. So we should not do that. Instead of that, uh, we should only use this i, the single column, to insert into the single column here without this iPhone. Let's do it. Got run. Let's see how our data looks. Let's see whether we have any iPhone values. Let's copy the same command here. So we need to check it for data frame to write. Yeah, hooray. We just cleaned out it. Uh, we just removed all the iPhone values here. Now let's try to convert every column into numeric format. I'm creating new data frame 3 now, which is having, which will be having the numeric values now. Let's do it. Got an error, okay. So, highest score is pending. Yeah, yeah, it is, because, you know, highest score is having some 
string values in this number, right? We have to remove them. Let's try to do this. Or we can just drop it uh, for this case because it will be somewhat uh, time taking to clean all of those issues. Or let's see uh, how many stars are there in the uh, highest score. So let's clean it. Data frame 2 dot highest score dot unique. Let's see how many values are there in this. So there are a lot of star values if you see 122 star, 99 star, 115 star, 101 star, 100 star, 104 star. There are many stars here. We have to clean all of them. Right. Okay. So let's clean it. So if you see here, there are some NAND values here. Let's try to clean them first. Is any? See, there are 259 rows. Still, we have removed uh, all the columns with hyphen value, and we, it becomes zero. Now we got NAND values to be removed here, right? It is very easy to remove NAND values. Just df2 dot drop any. That's it. And append them to the new data frame. I'm using df4. Let's see df4 dot is any dot sum. There are no NAND values here. And we still not yet uh, clean the hair score yet. Hair score dot unique. See, there are many stars in it. We have to remove all of them and convert the strings into numeric format. Let's see how we can do it. We have four dot highest score. If you print it, it is a list, right? Of 3179 rows. We are left with these rows because we have removed all those NAND values and hyphen values which are not having data. Let me iterate over this list. If you print it, it will be in string form, right? So all of them are strings. And we'll compare lost. And we'll be comparing the lost element of each string. If it is star, then we'll remove that star. If it is star, then we will remove that star and append the string into the same index again. Let's do it. I have minus one. Will it's equal to star. Then print of five. Let's do it first. You see, now we are getting only the star variables here. And if you do this, we are getting the numbers without star. Because I'm iterating over because I'm taking only the lost word uh, values here. Then I will make a list out of it. Let's see. Highest. Yes. Let me append these values to that list. Here score dot append without star. Yes. Here score dot append. We'll just append i. Now let's print this highest score. You see, there are many numbers without. You see, all the numbers without a star. We have cleaned all of them. Now let's append them. Now let's override the column with these new values here. Be a four of higher score equal to higher score list. Now let's try to run, convert all of them into the numeric form again. Copy it, pasting here, create a new data frame of df5. df5, we got data frame 4, data frame 4 here. So, yeah, now it's converted all data into the numeric form without any errors. Let's see our data here. Let's see the info also. So if you see now, all are int and float. All are in numeric format. We achieved it, right? So our next step is to visualize this content, to visualize this clean data, and decide which algorithm is used to make uh, good models with them. 
let's see them let's see it visualization visualization markdown so i'm importing cbon to quickly draw or plot all of those um, variables here cbon cbon as sns and sns dot pair plot we can send our data frame itself let's wait until it runs and draw all our uh, pair plots corresponding to each and every variable so these are the pair plots of each and every variable in our data frame if you want to implement linear regression using this data you want to find a linear relationship between there is linear co correlationship between any two variables like you have to find a straight line that's it so if one variable is increasing the second variable might increase or decrease if you have this type of correlation you can implement linear regression if you see here we have some type of correlation for the matches i'll zoom it for the matches and the not out data and also for here the bars faced and the number of fours and also the runs and the bars faced you see we have more correlation here the very narrow straight line here the runs and the number of bars faced let's try to implement linear regression for the for that um runs and bars faced let's see so i will be taking only two variables here for linear regression the first one is runs and the second one is bars faced let's see the data so this is the data we got this is only the five rows let's see the shape we have six dot shape there are 3179 rows and obviously two columns which we have taken for analyzing and using it for our linear regression model because they had a linear straight line relationship so let's create our linear regression model now so first uh, i will be creating it with uh, built in models then i will make a scratch then i will make this linear regression model from scratch using only python and not other packages from outside right let's do it guys so for using the built in model first of all we have to convert the data into train training set and a testing set in order to do that we have to import train test split package or function so from sklm dot model selection import train test split we can so the output for this train test split is x train comma y train comma x test and y test train test split let's send our uh, runs as x values so using runs let's uh, predict our bars faced this is as x value and this is as y value we have 6 and bars faced bars faced right we need to specify the test size also here test size i'm giving it as 0.3 70% of the data goes for training and 30% we store it for testing let's run it sorry in got run let's see the sizes for each of the training and testing data sets print off x time dot shape dot shape copy it and change the variables here let's print so you can see out of 3179 rows 2225 rows got into the training and 954 rows got into the testing part let's try now data first so before training we have to import our model right from the sql packages let me import it from sklm dot linear model sorry linear model import linear regression i have imported it then let's use it and fit our training data into that model l1 is our um, let's say object linear regression i have created it let's fit let's fit our data into it fit x train comma y train got 
yeah, it is expecting a 2D array, but we got only the 1D array instead. So let me do this. Instead of sending the 1D array here, I will be sending 2D array. So see how it is done. If you print BF6 of runs here, we'll be getting only one single array, right? But what it is expecting is, let me show you. I for I in. So this is a single array with all the values. This is a one dimensional array. What it is expecting is this all the values in 2D array. So we'll have to store each value in separate array and we will be sending this 2D array to that input. Let's do it. Copy it. Send it over here. Same for the bus face also. Copy it. Copy it. Paste it. Bus face. Run it. Run it. Yeah, this is list. So instead of list, you have to convert this list into data frame. So let's copy it. We do this in another cell. It will it will be more clearer. I will convert this into the data frame. Data frame using pandas. Boom. This is the runs data frame. And for balls fetched, I will be doing the same. Copying this balls fetched. So instead of this list, I will be just sending these variables here. Data frame. So run it. Now you can see it is as same as before. 2225 because I didn't change any size here, test size. Now run it. Fit the model. Input variables with consistent number of samples. Yeah, sorry, I have to reverse these variables. X time, Y time, and X test. Yeah, for training we have to give the certain variables right. So for training, we have to give x number of training variables, the corresponding y predicted values, that is nothing but 2225 with along with the 2225 predicted rows. So the testing data will be 954. Let's run it. So the model got ready. Now let's uh, try to predict. will be sending my x test data to it. Let's store it in y predict. If you want to know the accuracy for this model, you can do this. L1 dot score of y predicted comma y test. So it is showing me the 92% accuracy for the model. This is the built-in linear regression model we have used now. But if you want to create it from scratch, let me explain you the concept first. So here is the thing, guys. Linear regression is based on one formula. That is y equal to mx plus c. This is a basic formula. This is the basic formula used by linear regression. And if it's and if it is multilinear regression, you will be having this formula m1 x1 plus m2 x2 and so on. Let's see. This for multiple linear regression. So the x value is an independent value. In our case, it is runs, and y value is a dependent value. In our case, it is pulse based. Right? Then you will be asking me, what is m and c? That is what we need to find out. So m is the slope. And C is the intercept. We have to find the slope and intercept for this equation. Then only we will be getting the correct linear regression model. Let's see how to do it. So, now I will be creating one function to find that coefficients. Let's say estimate coefficient coefficients, I will be sending our x and y values to this function. Now, before this, I will be using one package that is numpy, because it will be used to manipulate uh, arrays. Let's create this uh, function now. I will be taking the length of this array, mp dot size of the x values, that is our uh, independent values. Before writing this function, 
So the formula for slope is m equal to it has numerator and denominator. For the numerator, we'll be taking the length of x and m values. We'll be multiplying it with uh, the sum of x into y and minus we'll make sum of x into sum of y. This is the numerator. And the denominator is all the x values with the same equation. So instead of y, you keep x. So this is the formula for denominator. And numerator by denominator, this is the formula for whole slope. And the formula for intercept is, we have to find the mean value for y and we have to find the mean value for x into our slope. This is the intercept value. Intercept. So this is how we find slope and intercept values using the x and y values. Let's see this. Let's see this in the coding part. For numerator, I'm making a formula using the length of the array. I've taken it here n star and we have to take the sum of x into y right for x into y we cannot do it for arrays right for x into y we cannot do it for arrays right directly that's why i'm using numpy that's where numpy comes into the picture so let's use numpy and we dot sum of x star y we have to import it as np before that b dot sum of x into y minus mp dot sum of x dot mp dot sum of y so this is a numerator and let's see denominator you can copy paste the same thing you can copy paste the same thing and instead of y you can replace x this is the denominator now you'll find the slope m that is numerator divided by denominator and you will find the slope that is mean of so here also we can use number mean of y minus we use np dot mean of x into our slope which we have found earlier itself and then we can return our slope and intercept let's run this so we got these values now we know the formula right let's try to calculate using this function let's take this uh, x train y train x test y test now I have to send x and y values through these estimate coefficients, right? So, send the x train and y train to train this model, to train our linear regression model, right? So, after training, you can see the written values are slope and coefficient, right? Yeah. And you can create a function, predate. Um, now you can see what this function will do. So, here you can see, after fitting the model, you have to predict it, right? So that's what I'm doing. So I will be creating a function to create the values. I will be taking x test as the input. So let's see how to create it. It is very simple. To create the values, we need x value and also the intercept values here. Right. So what I'm going to do is I need to get the intercept values. So before that, I'll be storing these intercept values in a array. Let's say array b. I'll be sending that array b here again while calling this predict function. And I will be returning the y equal to mx plus c formula here. Same thing. So I have to get the slope first. So we have slope. This is first index is the slope, right? Slope into, yeah, slope into x plus v of 1. So that's it. We are done. Let's send our text values here. Credit of x test. Oh, I forgot to send the p. Is not fine. Oh, let me run this. That's it. Boom. We got the output. Let's try to find the accuracy for this manual model we have created, right? To find the accuracy, we need to find the mean square error or root mean square error, any of these. Or we can use the auto score. So you will be thinking of what is this auto score? It is the same as uh, we have done here, right? To get the accuracy. L1 dot score. It is same. So we can import the auto score now from scalar dot matrix import to score before this i'll show you it before this i'll import it here itself to see the r2 score for this built-in model let me import it here 
and let me print print of auto score of y predicted value comma y test values sorry you can see it is almost uh, similar 92 97 We can say that is also one type of accuracy measurement here. You can see the R2 score for our uh, printed model here. In order to do that, I have to store it. Y printed 1. Let's see. Print of R2 score of Y. Y prediction 1, comma, Y test. To run it. So you can see it, 97% accuracy. Same as our inbuilt model. This is the linear regression model I built from scratch, but it is also giving the same accuracy that is given by the built-in model, right? Let's try to create one class and objects kind of things here for this linear regression model. I'm creating class. Let's quickly do this. Linear regression. Class linear regression. And I'll copy this function here. Paste it here. Self, I'll use a self object. You know, because it is uh, oops programming. And I'm also using the predict function. Instead of this B parameter, I can use the same parameters here. The M and C values. Let me define it here. M equal to 0, C equal to 0. And let's say self dot m and self dot c and let's also see the r2 score here itself define score if you use the input and test y test y credit just written these values just written the score value. That's it. We are done. Now run this. Let's create an object for it. We'll do. Copy it. Paste it here. Created an object. So instead of this estimate coefficients, let's try to rename it as fit. Same as the built-in model. So L2. Run it again. L2 equal to sorry, L2 dot fit of x trine, comma y trine. You can see the same values we got here and let's try to print it print of y test sorry print of x test we have to store that in y print let me get s3 run it we successfully run it and let's try to print the score right instead of this one i have to give it as print right run it run it run it fit it print it now try to find the score print of l3 sorry l2 dot score of y predict 3 comma y test sorry okay let's try to find the score for it l2 dot score of y predict 3 comma y test run it oh i have to send the self also here let me do that we also have to do this self.m and self.c in order to change these global values here we have to use self for that object we don't need to return it right uh, because we are not using it in national objects or we are not using get it for other purpose outside we are using it in the same object here self.m and self.c that is in slope and intercept let's run it you can see the same accuracy value but we have defined our own linear regression model here. So we have created an object for it, fit, predict, and score. You can see this is the same score I got when I use L1 also. Right. So, so if I print L1 dot score of y predicted, comma, y test. I got this, but this is not the R score, right? Let me print the R score. 
or to score. So you can see it is same. You can even check the slope and coefficient values for the built-in function. L1 dot coefficient. Print off coefficient. Print off L1 dot. And print off L1 dot intercept. Intercept. Quotient uh, is nothing but slope. Right? Let's see this. You can able to see it is 0 0.7 and 17.6 here. It is same as our model. We got the exact same values. Let me run this line here. L2 dot. Instead of L1, use L2 dot M and instead of L1 here, L2 dot C for intercept. You can see it is exactly same 0 0.7657 54 and 17.659658. So this is the built-in function and this is our built-in linear regression from scratch. So I will say what we have discussed in this video now. We have scrapped all our data. We have scrapped the data from the website ESP and Cricket Info, the Cricket data. Then we scrapped all the pages, like 75 pages, and stored them as an Excel file. This is the Excel file, and we clean our data without any null values, the not available values, and empty values. We have converted all our data into numeric format. And then And then we used a C1 for visualization and found, and found out two variables which will be used for our um, linear regression model that we built from scratch. So I have used the inbuilt linear regression model first. I have printed, uh, I have predicted the values and showed you the accuracy. Then after I built the linear regression model from scratch and implemented all the formulas along with accuracy, I have shown you this output. That's it we have discussed in this video. If you understand and want more videos like this, please subscribe. If you have any doubts and if you want any further explanation in this project, feel free to comment down. Thank you.